So I'm going to talk about uh, analytics in newsrooms. In particular, I'm going to talk about three things. I'm going to talk about what analytics are and why they are important to understand modern journalism. I'm going to talk about some debates surrounding analytics and what that says about journalism's image of itself and its audiences. And I'm going to talk about research into analytics and how it is used in practice. So first of all, what uh, is analytics? Well, analytics is the measurement of audiences and their behaviour. And we've really always had them in media, particularly advertising uh, funded media because advertisers have always asked for some sort of measurement or evidence that they are reaching a particular audience. So we've had ratings for TV and radio, we've had circulation figures for newspapers and magazines and we've also had surveys that uh, various media organisations have done to find out more about their audience, market research. The difference now is that uh, analytics uh, is in real time often and at a scale and an accuracy that we didn't have before. So for example, radio and TV figures were typically based on a sample, a small sample of the audience recording um, what they listened to and watched. Now, of course, with digital TV and radio, um, it's possible to record much more accurately how many people are listening and for how long, but also on websites, uh, how long people are reading, which articles they're reading, what they're clicking on and likewise on social media. The other big difference is that this information is provided now by a, a very wide range of agencies. On websites themselves, news organisations might use Chartbeat, they might use Google Analytics, they might have built their own analytics tools as um, The Guardian and the BBC have, for example. Um, on social media platforms, they might be relying on analytics from Facebook, analytics from Twitter, analytics from Instagram, and so on. And then there are various third-party tools as well. Um, the other thing about analytics that's worth highlighting is that analytics tools allow us to measure many different things. And those different things, those different measurements, are called metrics. So the word metrics is very important in analytics. Analytics is the term for the overall practice of measuring audiences and behaviour, but metrics is the specific or are the specific things that we are measuring. So for example, we might choose the metric of um, clicks, how many people click on a story. We might choose instead to measure how long people spend reading the story, or whether people comment on a story, or whether they share it. And these are all different metrics, and they can have a big impact on um, what a journalist does, or what a media organisation does, and so on. So moving on to why analytics is important, um, first of all, it's very common now for analytics to be shown on some sort of screen somewhere in the newsroom. So if you walk into the BBC, for example, there will typically be a screen somewhere showing how many people are on the BBC News website right now, how many of us are sharing stories. Um, it might be broken down into particular sections like sport and so on. And you will find similar screens at The Guardian, at The Telegraph, in local newspapers as well. Now that's quite a big difference because typically circulation figures might be discussed by editors. They might reach the journalists as well, but it was there was um, some distance between the two. It certainly wasn't for every day. In some organisations, there will be a regular email as well, which tells journalists which stories are performing best um, and trying to congratulate and provide positive feedback. And in addition, in many news conferences, so in the morning when, a, when a, the journalists gather around and decide what stories they're going to cover that day and discuss with the editor what stories they're pursuing, um, analytics are often mentioned in those news conferences and they will inform those decisions of what stories to cover and how. So if one story is doing particularly well or did particularly well overnight, they might choose to do more on that particular issue. Analytics is also used to price and sell advertising. Um, so advertisers might be told you are going to reach this many people or we have a, an audience which is 
this engaged, it tends to, you know, it will do these things. And engagement is increasingly important to advertisers, not just clicks. And analytics is also important outside the newsroom in looking at broader analytics of trends. So on Google Trends, for example, the website Google Trends will give you analytics about what people are searching for and clicking on, on Google. So that's Google's own analytics, but that might be used to inform stories that journalists choose to cover um, or how they choose to cover stories. Likewise, you will get trending stories on Facebook and Twitter, trending hashtags. These are all also forms of analytics. Trending um, topics are an external form of analytics. Now, kind of over all of this is um, one key reason why analytics is important. And there's a, a very famous phrase about analytics generally, in fact, in the business world, which is what gets measured gets managed. And this is probably the single reason why analytics are very important. As soon as you start to measure things, you also start to manage um, that information. So if you are measuring clicks, then you are going to manage your journalism in a way that increases the number of clicks that you get. It's going to change the way that you manage things. Which takes me on to the debates surrounding analytics. Um, and really, the, the, there's, um, this has evolved over the years, um, but the, probably the, the most well-known debate surrounding analytics is the widely expressed fear that um, when we start measuring our audience in some way, we will start to chase clicks or we will start to chase that audience and we will try and do stories that satisfy that audience. The best example of this, the kind of cliched example of this, is um, that people used to say that, that journalists would just write stories about Britney Spears because at the time that that debate was being widely discussed, Britney Spears was kind of the number one search term on Google. So the idea was that everyone would just be writing stories about Britney Spears because they would be chasing that massive traffic. Of course, this isn't true. Journalists did not write lots of articles about Britney Spears because the reality is much more complex. Um, and in fact, you know, journalists have always been motivated to try to reach an audience. They have always been accused of being sensationalist, for example, in trying to um, reach a, a massive audience. So these debates are not new. They're just uh, finding a new form in the context of the internet and analytics. Um, so, so that's one issue, is, is the fear of journalists chasing audiences. Another debate is around how journalists are rewarded for their work. Um, in the past, uh, particularly with new online-only startups like Gawker, um, journalists have been set targets and uh, given bonuses based on the traffic that their articles receive. And in fact, at some organisations, at some publishers, you will only get paid if your articles go past a certain number of page views or some sort of metric. Um, now, there's, there's, the big issue with this, the big criticism of this, is that there are many factors that a journalist cannot control um, that influence the amount of traffic that their article receives. So, first of all, obviously, is subject. If I am writing about a subject which, is, uh, which has mass interest, then that uh, is likely to get a lot more traffic than one which is much more niche. And so, yes, that might shape what I do if I am allowed to choose a different subject. But the other thing is that if one celebrity chooses to tweet a link to that story and they have a massive following, um, then that might generate a lot of traffic to my article, but I've had nothing to do with that. The fact that one famous person has chosen my article has no relationship to the quality of my article and the quality of my journalism. Um, so this has been resisted, and in fact the National Union of Journalists um, successfully stopped Trinity Mirror from introducing a, a bonus scheme, um, a target scheme similar to, to this. Um, so that's, that's another issue around uh, analytics is, is being used to set targets for journalists. Um, now, in contrast to that, another debate is, is about the opportunities that analytics 
provide for journalists. One big criticism of journalism and journalists is that we do not know our audiences as well as we should. Um, journalism has been criticised for not being uh, diverse enough, for not reflecting the diversity of its population that it's trying to serve. And, and these criticisms are backed up by evidence that journalism does not reflect the community it serves. For example, 98% of journalists hired in the last three years um, were university graduates. Um, only about half of the UK population as a whole um, is, goes to university and the proportion of the population as a whole that has ever been to university is smaller than that. So even on that basis, um, journalists are not representative of the significant proportion of the population that has not gone to university. Now analytics can help us to understand our audience better. They can help us to understand um, what they are interested in and what they are reading. They can also help us understand how to improve our own journalism to reach that audience. So if an article does not get read, or if we write an article and people land on it but then go off straight away, they don't read it, they don't spend a lot of time on it, then we know that there's something we could do differently as journalists to make that story more uh, engaging, more effective in reaching an audience. And that's a really important role for journalism. You know, uh, journalism is about reaching an audience, sometimes telling an audience stories that it might not um, think that it wants to know about. Journalists that we think are important, stories that we think are important, sorry, but that the audience does not yet understand to be important. Um, and there are lots of examples of news organisations using analytics to test different headlines, for example, and identify the one that works, um, to test whether adding visuals to a story has a good impact, which it does, um, and to test formats as well. So live blogging, for example, has emerged as a very successful format. Um, some of the Trinity Mirror newspapers now routinely live blog council meetings because live blogs of council meetings get a lot more interest and engagement from an audience than when you write a traditional 300 word news report, um, which we did for years. Council meetings are important. I think most people agree that you know decisions made by people in power are important and that we should try and make that accessible to our audiences. What analytics have done is help us understand a better way to bring that information to a wider audience. Um, and so in, in reality, really, there's a tension between um, analytics being used in a positive way and some of the, some of the possible side effects of uh, analytics which are negative. And that takes me on to the final point around some of the research around analytics. And I just want to touch on two particular pieces of research here. The first is from um, someone called Caitlin uh, Petrie in 2015. This was some research um, she did for the Tau Center. And it involved um, an ethnographical approach, so an ethnography, where Caitlin spent, times, uh, spent some time in the newsroom at the New York Times, in the newsroom at Gawker Media, which is a um, web startup, and in Chartbeat, which is an actual analytics company. Now, one of the things that that, um, that research found was that although management had some very positive ambitions for analytics and, and ways of reaching audiences, actually on the ground, when you spent time with journalists, um, you realised that it was becoming used as by the journalists themselves, not as a result of management, but as a um, high-score uh, ranking system. So she said it was not uncommon for journalists to become fixated on metrics that rank them or their stories, even if those are not the sole criteria by which they are evaluated. Um, she said that busy journalists tended to use metrics in an ad hoc way rather than in relation to strategic journalistic goals. So in other words, journalists were, were using it not in a way that, that analytics had been intended by the management. They were using it to rank themselves against each other in many ways, kind of repeating an old criticism of journalism that, that some journalists write stories for other journalists to impress each other rather than to um, engage with an audience. 
So that was an ethnography from 2015. In 2016, a, a bigger picture was produced by Cherubini and Nielsen, who looked at newsrooms in a number of countries. And what they identified was quite a, quite a wide range of um, different use of analytics. So this ranged from what they called rudimentary analytics, um, very basic, um, no particular strategy, you know, it was just this kind of chart on the wall, right through to what they called editorial analytics, uh, which was much more informed by long-term strategy, short-term strategy, and the objectives of the organisation. So, in, in other words, some of the behaviour that, um, that the ethnography by Caitlin Petrie identified um, could be classed as being rudimentary, not as sophisticated as it could be. Um, newsrooms have very quickly improved in that regard, um, but, it, but the practice varies enormously. You might go into some newsrooms and there is an obsession with clicks. Um, it is used badly um, to the detriment, perhaps, of what journalism should be. In other newsrooms, it is used to serve a particular objective. Um, journalists are well um, trained in how to use analytics and um, it is used for some good reasons. So in other words, to conclude, analytics um, can be used well or badly. Much depends on the organisation and on the individual. So there can be a difference between the organisational strategy and how they are used on an individual level. Analytics are important because they are one factor influencing how journalists choose and tell stories. Now it's important to, to point out that really what we're talking about here is audience behaviour. Um, so what we're saying is that the behaviour of audiences influences how journalists choose and tell stories and the measurement of that. So how that behaviour is measured um, is important and um, quite often there will be a, um, a difference between what people say they want and what they actually do. People might say they don't want lots of stories about the Great British Bake Off um, but the evidence actually shows that they do uh, read it. They might say they want good news stories instead of bad news all the time but the evidence, the analytics might tell us that actually they don't read good news stories and they prefer bad news stories. Now actually one, evident, one example of, um, of this being contradicted is the area of solutions journalism. Solutions journalism has become um, more popular, more widely used in journalism and this is solutions journalism is the idea of finding stories about solutions not problems or not just problems um, and one of the reasons why solutions journalism has been adopted by a number of news organisations is that the analytics show that it actually results in greater engagement from users. So it's a format which seems to do quite well. Um, so the final conclusion really is that there are opportunities and threats in, um, in analytics. Now over time analytics will become more complex and um, particularly as artificial intelligence takes a bigger role in interpreting analytics and probably automating certain editorial decisions. So the next big area of research, and there's lots more to be done in analytics itself, but what we'll probably see in the next few years is more research in the role of artificial intelligence in analytics and automating editorial decisions. <laughs>